All right, welcome to episode 74 of the Zenspath 4-Button Podcast. I'm your host, Jeremy Powers, and joining me from down south, Rachel. Hello, I'm back at it again. With and my also joining school. us from way up north. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Joey's not here. He's making pasta. Moving on. <laughs> From scratch, apparently it's going to be from an scratch, ordeal. Yes. I, yeah. I hope at, if 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 it traveled well, I'd ask him to save me some. But here we are. <laughs> we had to give him crap. You may have noticed this episode is very delayed because we all have lives and things are going on. So, uh, whoops! But hey, we're still here. That's life, as they right. say. <laughs> right. But we're still getting it done. It's going to be what at least three days late. Yeah, whatever. You guys had other, there's like 73 other episodes you can listen to. It's fine. Yeah, you Start know. Start around 50 or higher. That, that would have been time for them to catch up, like 100%. Right. Just, just get those numbers up. Like and subscribe. You know how it goes. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and start off with what we normally do, because I know we're on a bit of a time crunch tonight. But Rachel, what you been doing? Oh, man. What have I been doing? <laughs> Not a lot, to be entirely honest with you. Um uh, it, you know how I said with my new job, I'm going to have more time to do things. That's true. <laughs> but but <laughs> I don't want to do anything right now. It's just <laughs> those things. I'm safe. Listen, OK, Horror Nights is starting this, this this weekend. I'm saving my energy for it. That's that's my excuse right now. OK, that's the excuse that I have uh, because I love that time at this time of you, year. Absolutely you say love it. that. But just within the last, what, not even an hour, I uh, got you to make a financially irresponsible purchase. Do you want to possibly talk about that? Oh, Before yeah. You order? yeah true. <laughs> uh, well, J Jeremy over here sent me a link for um, uh, a, a cartoon Beetlejuice action figure that's got like ball joints and a bunch of little, like, little things. And I was just like, oh, uh, I don't know if I want this. And then he's like, but wait, there's two versions of Lydia coming out. And I was like, sign me the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if there's one thing that I love, it's Beetlejuice. Well, and it was like action figure, action figure, action figure. And all of a sudden she was summoned. Her bank account was empty. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it's empty. It's just slightly sad. Um, right. But it's it's one of those things that it's like, I'm I am very, I'm very picky with my Beetlejuice merchandise. There are you there are because I've sent you some good stuff before, like rare finds and you've turned them down because they were not quite what you wanted. Yeah. So yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's I'm very picky and I, I only have so much space and yeah, eventually um, when, you know, my my parents and I get our um, our house our dream house built where we I'm in a, a, a connected apartment to them and can help them when they're old and gray. Uh, <laughs> I already have like the themes picked out in the rooms in said apartment and um wouldn't you know Beetlejuice doesn't exactly fill um fit into any of the themes that I've talked about yet. So like uh I'm gonna have to find a space for all my Beetlejuice crap that's in my house, including my giant like seven foot plush um sandworm that I have sitting above uh my just, like front bay windows on a windowsill. Yeah. Just paint uh, pick one closet, paint it black, white, purple, and green, and just have everything in there. Like <laughs> Honestly, thinking about it, thinking about it, but have a I giant mean, worm in the middle and then like shelves around the outside. Yeah, right? totally. I mean, I planned out the kitchen and eating it. area, which is going to be like spooky tiki vibes. And then, OK, okay. my I gaming streaming room is going to literally look like I um, hopped out of a like uh, antique store, but magic and like there's going to be potions and old books and stuff everywhere. And it's going to be just very darkness in there. So this is, this is my vibe. But I'm still working on the other themes. But those are the ones I've definitely settled on. So, but okay. other than, um, other than you know, me buying a Beetlejuice figure that I probably should not have bought. But I did. Um, <laughs> I started streaming <laughs> Shadow Hearts yesterday. Um, thanks to Joey for the suggestion. Um, That's an uh, interesting and, one. Yeah, it's, I mean... If you guys haven't played Shadow Hearts, it is um it came out like many many moons ago, but it was it flew under the radar mainly because mm -hmm. like a week or two weeks later Final Fantasy X came out, so it was completely overshadowed. The game itself is bonkers. Um it just drops you in. Mm -hmm. Um 
And some of the stuff that happens within the first like 30 minutes of the game, they don't explain at all. There is no there, there there's no explanation to it. Like it's I'm like, oh, yeah, this dude's your dad. And you're terrified of him, but you also are not terrified of him or and then there's like it's just <laughs> and the main character keeps trying to make like a move, but in a creepy way on um on the like the main girl and I'm like, and and then I and then I I sit back for a second and I remember when this game was written and what localization was like then. And I go, <laughs> you know what? This actually makes a lot of sense. But I I do remember being told it gets better as it goes on, and it the the absolutely bonkers weird lines turn more funny, and it becomes kind of a it jokes with itself. But there's three games. I have all three of them on disc. Like mm. I and I think they're all complete in box. Um, oh, cool! And they're apparently impossible to find now. Same thing with uh, Xenosaga. I have all three of those, except for like the second one is a um, Hollywood video copy, but it's still a very nice case. Still so, playable. Yeah, I mean, it's got the it, the only thing that's like different about it is the back cover of the game is not the you know. But, you know, Hollywood Video did a good job with their cases and, and their labels and stuff like that. So um, that in and of itself, I think, makes that my copy of that game particularly unique. I actually so, do. Like, I, I don't hunt them down, but sometimes when I do find something that's like a blockbuster or movie gallery or some of those, it's kind of fun to get a hold of some of those because it's it's attached to something people don't really see anymore. You don't really be you're not able mm -hmm. to rent video games and things like that yep. like you used to as easily. So it's kind of just like an added little bonus to it. Yeah, I mean my copy of Dirge of Cerberus is literally a movie gallery copy. The case and everything <laughs> says movie gallery and it's got the weird spine and everything. Cause I remember when the one in Linhaven was closing mm -hmm. down on 77, I begged my mom for days to take us there when they were doing their sales. And then finally she relented after like a, a couple of days and there wasn't really a lot left but i found about say yes yeah. and i was like oh yes i that's the one thing i got the one thing because they were selling off <laughs> everything so makes me wonder what i could have gotten you know and like what they yeah. had it i always like think back on that and wonder um but i, I did of course uh back to my shadow hearts thing i started streaming that it's fun um i'm kind of doing like spooky type games um starting well now uh through the end of october so i'm gonna be playing shadow hearts and the other shadow hearts games if i get to them um it depends on um how i do with this game if i find it enjoyable if i don't find my the game i'm playing on stream enjoyable i just drop it flat to be entirely honest <laughs> with you um yeah, and I'm fair. also I also am starting the Black Mirror game series, not to be confused with the Netflix series. I was it's about like, to say they had a interactive one. I was like, are you playing that? I don't know. They let no, you do that. No, 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 nope, nope. This is okay. uh, this is like an old older style, like kind of not an adventure, but like kind of mystery. It's it's not necessarily scary. Um, it's just kind of spooky. But I mean, it's about this guy that inherits this like manor castle house thing in like Ireland. And the soundtrack is gorgeous. I'm talking oh. absolutely gorgeous. All um they uh the reason why I found it was because it was free with PlayStation Plus on PS4. Oh, yeah, nice. on PS4. And I said, oh, well, wait. And then I went on Steam and they have like all of them, including the one that I got for free on PS4 with PlayStation Plus, um, all for like $13. And I was like, all right, sick. OK, right. Awesome. That's not bad at all. And it included the soundtrack, the one that um, when I turned on the menu after because I was going to play it almost immediately after I got on PlayStation Plus mm -hmm. and I went in the main menu and I immediately got distracted by the music. I just sat there and listened to these <laughs> spooky bagpipes going on uh, the entire time. And I was like, oh, OK, I'm going to love this game, even if it's bad, because the music bagpipes. like slaps. Hmm. So okay. I'll, have to send, I'll have to send you the link to that because it's. Yeah, it's pretty, I want to hear it. It's pretty good. I'll, I'll send it at, um, at, after the show. But I'm going to be playing okay. through that. 
Uh, so hopefully those of y'all listening to me uh, talk um, will be uh, joining me at some point for that. And you can see me uh, get either confused, delighted, or slightly creeped out by the games. <laughs> um, I don't really... Like, huh. No, click show ends. Yeah, I don't I don't really get scared um, with just spooky games. Uh, I can't play Outlast. I cannot play Outlast. I remember like that's one one game I will say I cannot play like some certain scary games. I can't play. I can play Silent Hill. Fine. Easy. Any of the Silent Hill games, whatever. Resident Evil. <laughs> what? Well, I'll play it at a friend's house if that's what we're playing whatever um outlast absolutely not nope mm -mm. I not remember your uh, I was, cup of tea huh no I, that that game get, made me so anxious i was like crawling on one of my friends and i was like no nope 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 <laughs> <laughs> and and this is coming from the person that when i go through a house at horror nights i just cackle maniacally the entire time i don't get scared in haunted houses i don't watch scary movies i love haunted houses i don't really play like super like super horror games at all i'm i'm very niche in my spookiness i'm oddly specific last halloween we found out jennifer is very much like that like they yeah. took her to a pretty good haunted house around here and Amanda explained to her that, yeah, it's it's not real, you know, so don't don't panic. So she knew like, oh, OK, cool. It's not real. So she's laughing at everything. Was, it, G was even... it JC's or was it? I, I don't one? think it was JC's. I think this was one out. Uh, I think Tyndall was doing it. I, oh, I, believe. That's, that's I, I had to be out of town last year for work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Amanda took the boys to it. They messed with Jeremy really good, which was funny from what I told. But just Jennifer laughing at it, I was like, that that makes sense. That's that's just her. She's like, whatever. So, yeah. yeah. Well, We're she's going to try to my own heart. If she ever wants to go to horror night, if you're ever down here and she wants to go to horror night, she can go to horror nights with me. I'll even hold her hand if she gets scared. I would love to do that. I've never got to go. It's a I'd good like time. To do it. It's a good time for sure. So, OK, I'll have to plan a trip. Yeah, and of course, uh, and the food is delicious. Like the food, oh, food is always good. oh so good. Um, but like oh, um, well, road trips but, are more affordable now too. So I can yes, drive down there. That is very just true. Charge that on the way. Very true. And there's like a lot of like easily accessible electric car charging places down here. So <laughs> like there's a quite a few. Like I was going to a Culver's the other day and pulled around the back end of a gas station and there's a bunch of Tesla chargers just there. This is what trips me out. Panama City has got jack for charging, which is weird. Chipley has a bunch of chargers. For those that don't know, Chipley is a really small area around here. How how in the heck Panama does City. That, how in the heck does that make sense? I don't know, but they have like a grocery store that has them. They have a Walmart that has them. We don't have anything. I'm having to charge at a Kia Chipley right now is, until I can get. Ch Chipley is more like backwards than Panama City, and yet they have <laughs> they have electric chargers. Electric. Well, I mean, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> Does the beach have any? I think the beach mostly is like hotels, and they make you a lot of the hotels make you pay for a room before you can use the chargers, and then sometimes still charge you for the chargers. Oh Which my makes god! No sense. That makes no sense at all. Well, I mean, yeah. the college has charging areas, doesn't it? Still on the other side they of do. the. Okay. Um, they're incredibly slow, but they work really well for people. If you're there for classes, it's excellent. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, we're getting tangentially off on that. Yeah, we um, are for the electric but... car chat. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I hadn't talked to you about your car since you got it, other than oh, this is neat. Uh, well, I'm about to bring it up when I get into mine. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, other things I've been doing, I joined mm -hmm. Super RPG Friends on their stream on Thursday and they were playing Lunar and uh, we uh, made some really interesting laughs. I had some interesting laughs about Florida stuff because I want to say like 80% of the people like I think only want to two only two out of the like almost six people we had on the stream were in Florida and we just Florida the entire time. It was a it was it was chef's kiss just like yeah. I'd, I'd like to be on there at some point i haven't had I haven't had a chance to do that yet but i know you're more of an rpg person than i am so for me it'd be kind of an interesting fit 
I'm interested to see what game they do next. Um, cause you yeah. know what my, where my expertise lies in terms of like RPG goodness. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I hope if they ever play final fantasy 15 that I'm on literally every episode <laughs> because I will have so much to say. So. Well, I need to start doing some more extra quarters to get in there and we should do one on final fantasy 15. I think it'd be fun. Oh my God. Or a couple yes. of the final fantasies. We really should like there. There's a couple of them that we could talk about and I think we could have a really good back and forth with it for sure. I think we could. Yeah. Yeah. But except for but yeah. final fantasy seven, that'll be an interesting. <laughs> that's a mm-hmm. heated chat. <laughs> that is a is a heated chat, especially um I think it's gonna have to wait that that one's gonna have to wait until the next installment comes out though. Not so just the with crisis core, but with right. the next one, because then we'll have even more to talk about. So what I would want to know is if we agreed to do that, how long could we get Caleb to agree to be on the show before we finally told him what it was about and see how fast he tries to get out of it? He's like, I don't want to deal with this again. No yeah. more. <laughs> He's, he's like, I'm having, I'm having flashbacks to the radio show. <laughs> and he's just like, <laughs> I've, I've done my time. I don't want to hear these two. No. <laughs> for for those of you who haven't been listening to the show very yes. for very long, uh, Jeremy and I used to be on a um, uh, an AM radio station show um, with Caleb. And Caleb was the host. And Jeremy and I often just went at it over Final <laughs> Fantasy stuff. Like... We would just, it, I mean, it was all in good fun. Like we weren't like a all out drag out brawl. Just right. We're words. still, we're still talking. <laughs> we're still talking. Uh, so it was just one of those amusing things that we, there was things we disagreed on and things that we agreed on. And then mostly it was just good fun. So oh, if there's yeah. any, ever any Final Fantasy talk uh, on this show, you might always, see a little yeah. bit of that uh, because we have a lot of fun talking about that. So Oh yeah, no, it's it's always I, I miss those days. Those were great, but yeah, we do this those, now, so it's cool. it was it was it was simpler times back then. <laughs> the world was the world was much simpler. Yep. All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and jump into what I've been doing. I know we've been going into this discussion, but ironically enough, I'm actually playing an RPG right now. I'm so proud of you. Uh, I I've been trying this one out. I've been playing Live a Live Live Alive. Uh, live, we laugh, love, this. live, alive, live, alive. <laughs> <laughs> live, live, laugh, laugh, love, love, or whatever. So I've played through two parts of this, and I, I was kind of curious the way this game is broken down. It's made into multiple smaller stories. And mm-hmm. as I have said many times and even changed my Twitter account to show, I am very much uh, I have ADHD. Just paying attention to things sometimes is not my forte. I have to keep a giant list of notes to keep the show going. I will if I get distracted and I will just wander off and do something else. So RPGs are really a struggle for me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this a test. Because these are supposed to be almost bite sized mini RPGs that are collected in one big one. Mm -hmm. Can I trick myself into playing this entire game? So I decided because I didn't hear back from anybody in what order they think I should play it. So I went ahead and decided I'm going to play it chronologically as best I could. So I started off with prehistory. Telling you right now, folks, don't do that. It is boring. <laughs> prehistory, not a very good section, I don't think. Like it it struggled with me. I, I get the jokes where they don't talk. Mm-hmm. It's all pantomime. Mm-hmm. But it felt like it kind of keeps repeating the same jokes a lot. So it drags on. And you're like, cool, let's let's get on with this. Quit, quit doing the same thing over and over again. But even in that, like, just to tell you how bad it is for me playing these, it was only like two and a half hours. And I'm like, my God, it feels like I've been here forever. I've but I finally got years. through it. <laughs> right. I got through it and I was like, all right, I'm going to move on to something else. So I jumped into Imperial China. I kind of guessed that might have been the next one. I think it was not, but whatever. That one was shorter. Only took me about an hour and a half. But I really liked that one. I actually mm-hmm. got into it and played it where you're an old Kung Fu master realizing your time is coming to an end and you have to go and find uh, people to train disciples to learn your art to, to carry it on. And what I didn't know until a- till later, slight spoiler, sorry, people. You have you, you pretty much pick one to train because the other two are going to not be there anymore. So you have to kind of work your way through it, but it was intriguing. I had fun with it. And now I am on the, uh, the Edo Japan, uh, part. 
I played a little bit of the Edo Japan part on the demo and I bought the game and I have not picked it up since just because of like just timing stuff and all of the other games that I'm just trying to pick up and play. Right. I'm going to have to, <laughs> I have a lot of travel coming up, so I might be able to dive into this, but I started it. And I'm only been playing it for a couple of minutes and I got into the first fight. And as soon as I finished the fight, it said two kills. And I was like, oh, it's tracking how many people I kill because there's a stealth element to it. And I'm like, oh, I, they want me to sneak through this. And I was like, I want to see if I can get make a no kill run if it's even allowable. So I'm going to start this chapter over. I'm mm-hmm. only like five or ten minutes into it. It's no big deal. Yeah. Um, And see if I can stealth my way through a bunch of stuff to see what that does. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm having fun with it. So that's I'm glad that these different parts of the game are different enough. Like they they share a similar battle mechanic. It doesn't like throw you off. Right. Because I, I would not be able to stand that if it was completely different every single time. Um, But I'm having fun with it. So I, I'm I'm hoping to actually get through it. I know Joey wanted me to play the original Super Nintendo release and mm-hmm. even provided a way for me to play uh, the game translated. But I decided I wanted to go ahead and play this version first because this would be my actual first experience with the game. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to play through this first and then go back and compare and kind of go through some of the stuff on the Super Nintendo version afterwards, I think. Just to see. I may not play them all again, but I'll at least see how it looks and how the certain things were done differently. I might even do some comparisons to it. It's kind of fun. That'd be good. Uh, The next game I got, this one I forgot I ordered. (laughs) <laughs> limited run games surprise yeah it came out a while back um uh, called uh, i guess it's like hashtag drive i just called it drive but they always list it with a hashtag interesting it's just a fun endless driving game it's almost like an endless runner but with different cars you can get it's fun it just kind of eats up time you're dodging cars not to wreck it um, you're getting donuts or whatever the equivalent is in different areas you're racing to throw to get cops off your back. You're yeah. collecting bottle caps. It's a total time waster, but it's a really addictive game. Um, ironically, if I'm sitting there charging my car and I just want to wait with it, I'll put that on my dashboard. And I'm playing that while I'm chilling out. So <laughs> I guess I'm still technically driving some an electric car. But I had ordered this along with uh, Knights of the Old Republic which finally uh, came in. That's why it took so long. That had to finish being published before they could send it. So later on, I'll have me some, some nice the older public fun. Once I get through live alive, live a live, whatever. L- live and laugh, love, love. Right. Live a Jedi. Live a Jedi. And, um, so before I get into what the shows I've been watching, I wanted to talk to you about a little bit. You said you hadn't heard anything about my new car. So I was going to talk about that Not for a much, second. No, just other than that, you're happy with it. So, oh, I love it. It's so much fun. For those that didn't hear last episode, I got a 2022 Hyundai Ionic 5. Uh, so I have taken the dive to go with a completely electric car. And I absolutely love this thing. And I kind of figured out why I enjoyed driving it so much. Do you remember back at actually, I don't think I even I had it some at the college. I had that green Volkswagen Beetle. I have a very vague fleeting memory of that car. My last few years of driving it a little bit um, was about that time. I had gotten the Scion to replace it already, but hadn't mm-hmm. sold the Beetle yet. And But I always loved driving that car because it was low to the ground, had a good wide wheelbase. It was super fast for acceleration, could take turns. And this one drives a lot like that. So it mm-hmm. feels like I'm driving the Beetle again, which is, I always found fun and relaxing. Um. But I've been I've been really liking having an electric car. We've been able to take more like little trips like it was like 10 o'clock at night. The other day we were having a lightning storm. I decided you mean Amanda hopped in the car, drove all the way out to Mexico Beach just to stand by the water and watch the lightning storm. And it was just super romantic and nice and fun. And, you know, we hopped back and drove all the way back and we were just like, OK, cool. Didn't have to worry about paying for gas or anything. I'll just charge the car later. No big deal. So that's been kind of a nice little extra thing that we can do now. We can just hop in and go somewhere, which is why, you know, you're talking about doing the the Halloween stuff. I was like, oh, yeah, that's it's actually a pretty straight shot with a lot of charging places between here and Orlando or wherever. And I could just go 
<laughs> like mm-hmm. nothing's stopping me. Yeah. So we might Plenty have to work here. on that. Yep. Well, there's a lot all the way down. Florida's a lot of weird things, but they're at least really good about charging stations going from the top and bottom of Florida. They really are. It's I, I had to drive down there a few times and I've seen that. So um, so jumping into shows, I watched the first two episodes of She-Hulk. Have you watched that at all? I have not. I've been too busy trying to catch up on what we do in the shadows. That's on our list. I can't watch that until Amanda's home. So, yeah, Um, what I've seen of that, it was funny. She-Hulk, I am really enjoying so far. I'm two episodes in. That's all they've released so far. Some people are making stupid claims because a lot of people just can't stand having a woman lead a TV show. I don't know why it's ridiculous, but I'm getting a good laugh from it. Like it has the the sense of humor that the comic books from her series always had. You know, she's breaking the fourth wall, which is not a copy from Deadpool. She-Hulk did it well over a decade in the comics before Deadpool was even created. And even when he was made, he was more of a serious character that was a play off of Deathstroke from Teen Titans. He was basically the Marvel ripoff version of him until they started making him more irreverent and funny, you know, to kind of go off on that side. Um, But I'm liking it. I think if you if you get a chance to watch it, it's got a good sense of humor to it. Yeah. Uh, And then speaking of sense of humor, the last thing I started watching was Lower Decks season three which has only been one episode so far, but it started off with a bang. Uh, Just if you like Star Trek jokes or have ever watched Star Trek or know what Star Trek is, there's going to be something in here that makes you laugh and wonder why do they do this? Um, But specifically, if you are a Star Trek fan and somehow have not watched this, you really need to to do that. Like just watch it. Even the opening, the freaking opening of the show makes me laugh every season because they keep making it more over the top. Like just there's a part of it where the Cerritos, that's the ship from the show, fly warps into an area and it's like a board cube fighting with some Romulans. And they're like, oh, hell no. You just see the ship turn and just fly away. Like, just screw this. As the seasons go on, the fight keeps getting worse. They add like Klingons to it. Then all of a sudden the pack leads are in it. And then this time the it opened up and there's like the giant crystalline entity that's there fighting with the Borg. And I'm just like, what in the hell are they doing? Rachel's just like, mm. <laughs> you're not a big Star Trek person, I know. <laughs> I like, you know, I like certain things about it. And I used to like it a lot more. Like when I was younger, it was something that I watched with my dad. Right. Um, and but like as an adult, as much as I, you know, enjoy watching it when I, you know, have a moment and it's like, OK, well, there's nothing else on. I just need something to occupy the sound Star <laughs> Trek. Um. And some of the episodes are really good, like, but it's just, you know, it's not not my thing as much as other things are. Yeah, man, I, I will say that her... I do like Star Trek better than Star Wars. Hmm. Shots fired. Yeah, I like both. Fired. Yeah, I mean, people can like what they like. I mean, like Amanda and I, we decided to just put one a movie on last night and she had never seen Star Trek six, the undiscovered country. So we just watched it while we were working on our room. So whatever. All right, well, we'll go ahead and go from here and move on to the news, which we have a whole bunch of Gamescom announcements. God, did you catch any of the Gamescom opening ceremonies and all that stuff this this year? Just this Jeff Keighley. Just the stuff that interests me, like just the stuff that I was like, I knew that they were going to be announcing something or showing something. Uh, And that's the thing, of course, we won't be mentioning. (laughs) um but um i've read through the list of and the only one that like like there was some good stuff like um everywhere looked interesting kind of yeah the only thing that caught my interest on this was the fact that it's coming in 2023 doesn't say what systems but this is from x rockstar uh developers who are used to making open world games and Mm -hmm. this is their what they're calling truly open world title uh it's very nebulous like i need to see more of what they're doing but i'm curious mhm mhm uh, yeah, yeah. yeah most of this list we're just going to go through kind of quick yeah and just when we get to particulars we'll stop because there's just too much yeah uh, we'll, we'll briefly commentate on things yeah uh dune awakening open world survival mmo if you like dune 
good good for you, I guess. Uh, PlayStation DualSense Edge Controller. I like this. It's going to have interchangeable stick modules, two back triggers, programmable buttons, profiles. I'm not even being facetious. This is pretty much their take on an Xbox uh, Elite Controller. And that's, that's exactly what they, I was going to say. Literally, yeah. when you said when I read this as like seconds before you started reading it, <laughs> uh, I literally was like, this reminds me of the Elite Controller where it had the little the little things that you could attach to the back to make yeah, it the easier. Paddles. To pull, like with the triggers. Yeah. Yep. So. But yeah, like I'm sorry, I just got a weird text message from my bosses. Uh, <laughs> um. But I'm actually I'm probably going to get one of these. Like, I really like the Elite controller. I like the customization, the heavier, weightier feel to it. It's more of a premium controller for a lot of that stuff. And I'm glad to see Sony getting a version of that specifically for the PS5. So mm-hmm. I'm I'm down. Uh, my other hope is for this. I had tried probably about a year ago. I was trying to work on a project for a guy that I'd met who had lost the ability to use. I believe it was his right arm. So he was trying to play just left handed and yeah. we tried modifying a PS5 controller for it. But the way Sony built those made it just about impossible to do any kind of modifications to it. Like you couldn't solder to the inside board. It was screen printed on plastic for the circuits. So even just a little bit of heat and it would just melt away. So I'm hoping, you know, this may be a more expensive controller, but I'm hoping it's a physically more moddable controller. Give me an actual board, actual components to work with. Mm-hmm. And maybe we can do something, you know? So I don't know. I was happy to see it. Plus yeah. I wouldn't mind getting one in black. <laughs> that is very, very true. Like yeah. that, that would be nice. And also a lot uh, cleaner looking. Yeah. But surprisingly yeah. very, I just, I, I need to look a little bit more like apparently you can change the, the sticks, not just like change the stick covers like you can on the mm-hmm. elite. Yeah. Where you could try different ones and change their, the stick tightness and everything, but like they can actually remove them, which I wonder if that's their response of how to fix the drift issue. They still have possibly, so, I, mean, I mean, heck them doing this is a better job than Nintendo's ever done in regard <laughs> to fixing joy con drift. So you are not wrong them. You are not wrong at all. Listen, Joey is not here to give the savage take. So it's obviously my job. So I, I I've actually had to go in and multiple times on my kids, joy cons and so forth, replace the actual entire stick fun- like module inside those joy cons. Cause I, there's no point in going out and buying another one. I just order a new replacement one. They just need to update the technology on those. Like I would pay extra to get one that uses the magnetic read yeah. instead of the physical one, because those are just as accurate. Yep. But they don't have the wear down issue. Yep. But, all right. You That's know, getting into a whole technical yeah. bitching, yep. mm-hmm. <laughs> which I will do. So we're on what Callisto protocol is shown again, but it's got a release date December 2nd of this year. Cool. That, are, you know, I know you were talking about like your scary games. Is this one you're going to try? Cause it's like gory as hell. No, see, that's the thing. I'm not okay. a, I'm I I'm not a I'm not one of those people that likes um an overabundance of gore. Like I don't watch the Saw movies. Yeah, I only I watched the um, first one, got to the second Saw part and I was like, "No, I'm done." <laughs> I'm I don't done. remember I don't remember which one it was, but I remember watching one of the Saw movies and it was at I think it was at one of my friends' houses and I literally said it was during the credits and I looked at them and I stared them right in the eyes and went this song is an ex japan song and that was the one thing that i took away from it was this song is by ex japan and literally and they were like huh really and i said yeah and they were like i wonder what else what other credit songs were done by the people of ex japan and i literally was like you remember repo the genetic opera and they said yeah and i said that really short song at the beginning of the credits also by Yoshiki of X Japan. And they're like, Oh my God. How do you, how do you know this stuff? And I'm just like, Did you just we- weeaboo a, a horror game? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I weeabooed <laughs> a horror, horror movie. movie. Yep. That's exactly <laughs> what I did. 
So, oh, and, yep, yep. But That's hey, great. listen, if you ever want me to uh, to weeb anything horror, I probably can. Literally, I'll find someone that was involved with it that is just in total like involved we, in weebery. So, oh my god, we need to make like a little quick segment we post every couple weeks, just like you know, <laughs> we a horror or whatever. You know, we we'll figure out a name. <laughs> Actually, like, we can just have we a boo like a ghost, like yeah, <laughs> like ran, random weeb facts from from horror stuff. So hey, you could do that for some of your streams for the uh, the spooky times. Oh my gosh, you're right. I'll just I'll just give weird uh, facts. Steal, do it. Just mention the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right. So this next one, Lords of the Fallen. I wish I knew something about, but this was the first of a trend of this show where they muted it for YouTube. So they show the trailer. I don't know what was being said or what was being done, but it even popped up saying muted for YouTube. Like Jeff, this is my, look at me, Jeff. We have jobs. We can't just, no, no, keep looking. We cannot just watch this stuff all the time. We have to do things. So watching on YouTube, Jeff, stop paying attention. Look at me, young man. I, I'm Jeff now. <laughs> <laughs> so why are you muting the, like people pay to advertise on these things to show their games. And you're just like, we're just going to completely take out content. I don't know. I don't know that it was <laughs> Gamescom. It was probably YouTube. I don't know. No, they, it, it, they had to do it because not only did it mute it and they put cheesy music over it. They added an animated graphic that says muted on YouTube. So they, I, the only thing knew I could that think was of, happening. The only thing I could think of is that there was something in regards to the content that was not allowed on YouTube for some strange reason. I don't oh, know. No. They, they played a game later, completely unedited that says the F word more times than I thought they could get away with. And I was like, well, that covers everything. Oh boy. We'll, so we'll get to that one. So, um, I will say that when I saw Lords of the Fallen, I was like, oh, this, this, I was like, this title sounds familiar. Cause I'm pretty sure there was a game that was something similar to this title on oh, ps4 yeah, no. when the ps4 launched or shortly after and i remember seeing it the spine of it stare at me from from where here's the counter in the mall game stop there's the <laughs> ps4 section and yep. here's lords of the fallen always like hey i'm a game right i don't I even mean. know what it's about but i'm a game <laughs> You got that new system? Why don't you play me? Do you care what I am? No, you just need a game. Exactly. So So Lords of the Fallen is one of those names where they just have a bunch of like nouns and verbs on dice and they just roll it and go, oh, there's the name. Lords of Fallen. Cool. We're good. Let's go. Uh, next up, Moving Out coming in 2023. Now has online or local multiplayer coming to Switch, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S and Steam. Cute game. Fun series. Like good for playing with people. It's adorable. Uh, next up, new Tales from the Borderlands, October 21st. Also coming to pretty much everything, including Steam and Epic Games. Uh, that series, like this is a whole new set of, of cast. They're not. This is a different group from Tales of the Borderlands, which showed up in later Borderlands games. So. I know there's a, what looks like a larger woman that looks like a waitress in a wheelchair that murders people. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued. Like, what the hell is going on? Um, yo, you look like you want to say something, but you just oh, don't know what to say. So I just, I, I was cur a curiosity bit me about our Lord of the Lord of the Lord of the, <laughs> Lord of the Lords, Fallen Lords of the Fallen um conversation, and I have to huh? explain this. Like, I have yes. to. Okay, so I was right. <laughs> it is, it is related to the the Lords of the Fallen game that came out in 2014, which was oh one God. of the first, which is one of the first souls like games that came out after like uh, dark soul, like that made after dark souls, it became popular and mm -hmm. it's more of a spiritual successor, which is why the game isn't called Lords of the Fallen two, but rather the Lords of the Fallen, which is a oh, very, the, I forgot the, yeah. Yeah. So it's, a, it's, it's kind of confusing, but it's uh it's, it's more, it's <laughs> kind of, it's yeah. It's as they describe it, it's more metal. It's, it's more metal. So <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm like, I was like, Oh my God. So more oh. metal. Oh, wow. oh, but wait, wait, oh, wait. Another, but there's more. Wrinkle, another wrinkle. There is a sequel game entitled 
Lords of the Fallen 2 that is actually in development that is the sequel to the original Lords of the Fallen. So... <laughs> is this the Kingdom Hearts of Dark Souls? <laughs> we're uncovering we're in the, the, the Lords of the Fallen secret lore here on the show. <laughs> On the Zen Pass Four Button Podcast. Oh God, this is terrifying. <laughs> you, you more thought, news as we get it. As we get it. Yeah, you, you thought, <laughs> you're gonna be you breaking with the Lords of the Fallen special report in the middle of the show. Honestly, you 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 thought the you thought the you thought this show was gonna be simple, but little did you know. But no, no, that's oh, it. No, Rachel, I, just, I had to, this show is never simple. I just I ta- I had I had to I had to say it because I was like, okay, there is no way that these two games aren't related. They are okay. Hey, we've oddly learned something though. new against our wishes, so yeah. <laughs> we'll never get that that back. Uh, next up, Dying Light 2 Bloody Ties DLC coming out October 13th of this year. It's looked like arena based fights. I don't know if you like Dying Light 2. Hey, more DLC. Enjoy. Uh, Tortuga, a pirate's tale coming for PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox One and Xbox Series X and S. Yes, that may be a lawnmower you hear in the background because like clockwork, my neighbor loves to mow the lawn at night. It's, it's okay. Weird. A really loud car just went by my house. So I'm, I'm, That's I'm true. sure I'm sure uh, that was also part of it. So I know you had some stuff to talk about Tortuga, a pirate's tale. So when I first saw the title <laughs> and the first time I saw the title was in the show notes, I had not watched Gamescom anything and I still haven't, um, by the way. Uh, so I should probably do that because She's I winging it. Because I literally just saw that, like, you know, a few things down the line, it says Sonic Frontiers. And I was like, oh, I should probably look into that. Uh, yeah, looks good. But, but um, Tortuga, A Pirate's Tale. I was like, oh, okay, a pirate game. Maybe it'll be better than Skull and Bones. Wrong. I was wrong. It's worse. <laughs> it's like a poor man's Skull and Bones. And Skull and Bones is not good. It's bad. Is, is it Skull so, and Bones with Scurvy? So literally, literally the only pirate games out there worth playing is like the OG Sid Meier's Pirates, uh, Black Flag, which is the best pirate game on the planet. And then, of course, Sea of Thieves. Um, And I mean, there's other pirate games, but eh. those are your high marks. Yeah, those are those are the those are the well known, the, the, the top tier piracy games, which, you know, right. makes me wonder. Um, what the world would have been like had we gotten that Pirates of the Caribbean game that was supposed to come out, uh, where literally you, you know, you were your own captain, you got your own ship. It was a wide world exploration thing. You got, went onto islands and dug up treasure. There was like mission based, (laughs) story heavy, open world, crazy. And you know what caused it to be canceled? Money. Disney Infinity. (laughs) But you got a Captain Jack Disney Infinity figure. <laughs> That's all well and good, but I wanted my proper pirate game. I'm still waiting. I'm still, still waiting for a good pirate game that gave me the same feelings that Black Flag did. And I will probably be waiting until the day I die. But here's hoping. So. <laughs> Remember, kids, the best pirate game is the one you steal. Um. <laughs> not wrong just to be ironic yeah uh next up was marauders this is an early access in october of 2022 kind of look like a payday in space no, you gotta Payday's say it dramatic. you gotta you gotta you gotta say it dramatically payday Jeremy. in space in space <laughs> okay we're doing that one payday in space exactly there you go sorry Suki was wanting the to dog. come up here with me so <laughs> uh destiny 2 lightfall reveal trailer i don't know what was going on it didn't really look like destiny but whatever it's destiny 2 enjoy is is destiny even destiny anymore like i i it got to be too much one thing i did want to mention that it it wasn't a story on here but the people from destiny 2 did come out and say they will no longer be uh like shelving old content like they're bringing all the thank god so that's I, I kind of understood some games have to do that to balance things out, but they were getting a little aggressive with it. Are they gonna Are they gonna bring back the content they already shelved? Is the question because there's some of us who hasn't com- who hasn't completed any of that. So I don't know off the top of my head. So, to be honest with you, I need to look and see. Uh, that's an excellent question. So next up is the Sonic Frontiers, which has a release date of November eighth of this year. 
Oh. Coming, of course, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X and S, Switch, and Steam. Switch version still looks surprisingly better than I ever thought it had a right to. I will probably, uh, to be honest with you, I might buy it on Steam and stream it because I love me a good Sonic game. I might just see what kind of weird mods they can do just because they released Spider-Man on Steam and now you can play as Kermit and swing around the city. And it's fantastic. It's just Kermit the Frog webbing and doing all this stuff. And oh if anyone God. records the voices in his voice, I will buy that game again on PC. Won't even care. So I will say um, what would make it only better is if they modded it, but they modded Mary Jane out of it to be Miss Piggy. I'm okay with this. Yeah, I accept. Um, who would Kingpin have to be? Who would be the main villain? It would either have to be Waldorf or Statler, I think, or a combination like one homogenous giant guy with both their heads on top. <laughs> so it's like Kingpin is Waldorf and Statler. Hmm. That that horrible nightmare. I was trying to think who Rizzo the rat would be. <laughs> he's too friendly. <laughs> he is too friendly. Oh, no, no. He's um Dr. Octavius. <laughs> All right. I don't because, know. Rizzo would be kind of a funny stand in for uh, Rhino because he's so small. Yeah, that, that's Just fair. A little tiny yeah. rat that can ram through things. That's fair. All right. We're going to we're going to come back to that conversation in a future in a future um in a in a future uh, episode where we just literally will bring up a video game or a movie and talk about um who would be Muppets and who would be the actual be, person? Yes, I was about to say the video game yeah. version of that would be a great conversation, mm -hmm. but I love that discussion. Yeah. Anyways, so they showed the mysterious stranger uh, with some of the gameplay. It's looking really good, so I'm kind of mm -hmm. hopeful on how this looks. Um. So yeah, Sonic Frontiers, like it's about to. Is it going to rip our hearts out? Or is it going to actually be good this time? It's literally a flip of the coin. We don't know. You know, I think I think they have slowly learned their lesson. We've said that multiple times. No, that's what like, I mean. It's like slowly, like, you know, <laughs> Sonic 06 was an absolute tragedy, a humorous oh. tragedy, but yeah, a tragedy no, nonetheless. Uh, but who's learning then, the lesson? Is it them in the development or us for buying these? <laughs> like, that's true. And then that other, what, what was the Sonic game that, that like came out on, was it on Switch that you could create your own Sonic character? Oh, yeah. It's basically my OC, the Sonic game. Well, it was basically Sega. We tried to weeb and then weeb to weebed too hard, and that's what happened. You never go full weeb. Oh, they they didn't even go. They they went beyond full weeb. They weebed. <laughs> so, oh man. Oh man. All right. Uh, next up is Under the Waves coming in twenty twenty three. Once again, pretty much for all the current and modern systems, Steam and Epic Games. This is from Quantum Dreams. And it's an underwater exploration title. Um, if, you, not, if you like Subnautica, this game's for you. Well, Except you mentioned different. that, but there's actually something from the makers of Subnautica coming up. So we'll get to we'll that. We'll all be gosh diggity danged. <laughs> uh, Goat Simulator 3 gameplay was shown. It's Goat Simulator. It was muted for YouTube, but still crazy looking. Um, so clearly the game we've all been wanting for years is Goat Simulator 3. Like... Honestly, I remember when that game came out. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. It threw me off at first because I was like, did I miss one? But they purposely skipped over not making a goat simulator, too. Like they did it on purpose. <laughs> and it it got me at first. I was like, what? Uh, uh, this with one, all, I with, am... all, with all the expansions that happened with it. That's true. Yeah. So, so this next game, I have to amend our previous conversation. This Belongs to the Pantheon is one of the best pirate game series out there. Oh, hard, this yeah. is Return to Monkey Island. The Monkey Island series in general, you know, with Guybrush Threepwood and LeChuck and all of that needs to. It's a it's a pirate series you need to play. Um, it's it's you second good. This? Okay, it's cool. so good. <laughs> like anytime anyone talks about Monkey Island, literally the theme song starts playing in my brain. It's like the music is gorgeous. I, I didn't even really know about this game until I went to that level up concert and the they played the theme song. And I was like, whoa, 
I need to play this. Just really? This music. Yeah. So. So this, uh, they kept their, their great sense of humor. And the original creators have come back to work on this, which is great. It's coming out for Switch and PC. It was presented by Stan S. Stanman, the marketing expert, who is apparently an in-game character. Yes. I mean, he, he uh, listen, he, he tried to sell me a boat and I just, I stole the boat. Right. So. so September 19th is also International Talk Like a Pirate Day, which is when this is coming out. Uh, but this I love. If you pre-order the game, you get free horse armor with that pre-order, which they explicitly told. It's just going to be in your inventory. You cannot do anything with it. It's used for nothing. It just sits there taking up an inventory slot. Provided and approved by Stannis Stanman. Because that's like literally that's, how he talks. Yeah. So that's great. It's useless DLC for pre-order. I'm not going to lie. I kind of wanted to pre-order it just to laugh at that. I might do it. I kind of want to get this on, on Switch to play it. So. All right. Moving on from that, we have Moonbreaker getting early access September 29th of this year. It's going to be on Steam. This is from the Unknown Worlds, uh, the makers of Subnautica. They're working with an author named Brandon Sanderson. Uh, yeah, not he's familiar he's with him. He he real well known. Like uh, yeah, okay. he just he he wrote like five books in a year. Like that's that's a You're lot. Odd. That is a lot of books. And his books are like thick. Like that's a lot of cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. But he's he's like literally there's memes all over like TikTok and the internet that are like when um Brandon Sanderson um makes an announcement, all all their authors run scared. And I'm like, you know what? Since I heard about how he wrote five books in a year, I understand them running scared because that man's crazy. Very yep. talented, excellent writer, but good God. So yeah. So this one, um, he's writing the story for it in the world. This is a turn-based tactical game that uses actual miniatures. Um, like you lost They're me. in-game miniatures, like D&D miniatures. Oh, uh -huh. yeah, but you lost me the moment but, it said tactical. So Yeah, I kind of called it tactical, but they say it's Hearthstone meets XCOM, so I guess that would be tactical. That's how they described it by one of the creators. So what I'm hearing is, is that Caleb is going to play this game. I might actually play it too. I think my son John is probably going to play it as well, because one thing I do like is the miniatures, they let you fully customize and paint them on the computer. Interesting. So you can customize every one of them as you would an actual miniature. So that's kind of cool. So we'll see how that world goes. Uh, next up was Friends versus Friends. This is for PC and consoles. It's a card-based multiplayer FPS with animal characters. Uh, let me explain a little bit more on that because I'm actually kind of intrigued. I'm like, how do you combine card based and first person shooter? That's my question. So you're playing the shooter against each other. And then you have a hand of cards that you can play whenever you're doing stuff that changes the rules and what's going on while you're doing it. Mm. So you can change what people are, change gravity, change weapons, change all kinds of stuff. It actually had some kind of funny looking scenarios playing out. I might give it a try. Like it's, it's going to be on consoles and stuff. Um, they didn't weren't too specific. I would be surprised if this didn't make it to switch. It looked like it would be a switch type game, but at least I think it'll be on like series X and S and PS five at, at a minimum. Um, next up is lies of P this comes out in 2023. This was intriguing. I'm not a dark souls guy. I I've tried a lot of them. Um, Elden Ring is probably the closest mm -hmm. I've been to actually enjoying one and playing it for a lot of times. This game but looks I love sick, the by the look way. Of it. It yeah, looks I love sick. the look. It's basically a steampunk retelling of Pinocchio with a Dark Souls game mixed in. Yeah, I don't I don't like the idea of it being a difficult game because I don't I personally do not period play yeah. difficult games. They stress me out too much. So I, I might watch stew. I might watch what I have too much to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and so I might watch other people play this. I don't know that I will purchase it myself. So. And this, the whole thing with dark souls type games, it comes down to once again, I know I keep bringing this up like a broken freaking record, but you know, it's how my brain is ADHD. When you get really frustrated with something or 
that fun stops for some reason, you can't just be like frustrated and keep going. Like you, your brain wanders to something else. You want to play something else. And that's why I always have those almost like comfort games. I'll go play because I always enjoy them. Like, so I always go back and enjoy Mario Kart or, you know, playing other kind of puzzle games and stuff like that. So these super difficult games are really hard for some people to play because of that. But damn, this game looks amazingly detailed. Like, I, I like how Pinocchio looks where he's kind of part robotic, part, you know, trying to be a real boy type thing. Um, obviously, this is not based on the Disney version of Pinocchio. This is probably based on the original tales that Pinocchio was from. I bet you Money Jr. is going to love this. He loves Dark Souls games, like religiously loves them. So my, my son will probably tell us about it. Uh, next up was Stranded Alien Dawn, getting early access in October 2022. This one's going to be on Steam. It's a social survival game about astronauts who have crashed on an alien planet. You build up farms, homes, defend them, and explore. Kind of, you know, generic in some of that. Uh, Atlas Fallen was next, 2023. PS5, Series X, S, and PC. Didn't really go too much into that one. Homeworld 3 is going to be first half of 2023. Steam and Epic Games. This is a new entry from the 1990s PC space strategy series. So it's been a little while since we've got a home world. So to go back just a yes. second for Atlas Fallen. Um, yeah, go it's, got, it. it's got sand surfing in it. That's all I'm going to say. Ooh, sand surfing. If I remember correctly, like I was like shield surfing in Breath of the Wild type thing, or is this something else? Uh, you're surfing on sand. That's the only thing like okay. it came up in my, you know, when you turn on, um, when you turn on your internet browser, you get sometimes like the 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 like latest news stuff pop up on your right. homepage. Uh, it was all it was talking about was Atlas Fallen, and I, it showed a little clip, and it was just this like dude just like gliding across the sand, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, that looks fun. So yeah, I I tried to go back and watch some more on that one because it it had a really detailed CG trailer. Mm-hmm. And they showed some of the gameplay, but I think more of it's going to come out later. That's why I didn't put too much of the notes on it. Yeah, I was like, okay, this is going to have to expand more because we're not going to know more about it until the at least you know sometime late this year or early next year before it comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, these next two, I'm I'm not a huge part, a big fan of them, but because I really don't play them at all. I know Remy, I enjoy some of these, so he might. But Genshin Impact, uh, in part, I, I mistyped that one's Impact. 3.0 Sumera trailer showing some of the new advancements for that game series. And then from the same developers, they have the Hunkai Star Rail, um, which is an RPG of some sort from them. Oh, uh, I was uh, Star Rail. I was like, is it on a train? Is it based on a high speed train? Um, is it, does train it, does it have kind. to do with gliding or grinding on rails a la Sonic or Ratchet and Clank? Like, I need some more details. So. Yeah. It, it looked like it was an actual train they were on. Oh, okay, cool. So I was so, my first guess was right. It had to do with correct. a train. So yes, um, I would recommend checking out the trailer for this one. Um, it's not really a big thing that I'm into, so I I didn't really pay too much attention to it. So apologies. Uh, next up was High on Life. They showed boss gameplay, which was like I'm okay with like mature rated games and so forth, but this was kind of excessive. It was just like. F this, F that, like constantly. And I was like, okay, you're just saying it like a child would say it. Like, I've learned a new word I shouldn't be using and just using it constantly. Mm-hmm. Remember, kids, when you use curse words, you just pepper them in. You pepper them in for flavor. It's not the entire meal. You don't eat, you know, a bucket of salt. You have a bucket of fries and you put some salt in there to make it better. That's what cursing is. So I think that was today. honestly the most... That was poetry, Jeremy. <laughs> that was a dad explanation of cursing. That, yeah, but it was it was good. It made <laughs> sense. Like I don't think I've ever like explained cursing that way. And yeah, it, I'm, I'm it 42 made years old. Sense. I'm pretty sure I've had to explain cursing to children. <laughs> like it it makes sense, but yeah. I don't know. Like I see, I'm I don't I don't <laughs> think cursing should be excessive either but you know sometimes you just gotta throw a wordy dirt in you know unless it's samuel jackson he gets yeah. to say what he wants yeah he can he any anything Mother connects at that man's mouth right now yeah yeah he says whatever he wants when he wants so, yeah yeah um 
I don't know. It's it's from Justin Roiland, one of the creators of Rick and Morty. A lot of his okay, he, he's that makes me less surprised. Of, yeah, some people have criticism. But a lot of his voices are kind of similar, but I mean, he is very creative for a lot of this stuff. I'm just hoping the game isn't quite as drastic as they're trying to show. It's almost like the trailers are almost like shock value. Like they want to get people in with the. Mm-hmm. They're perfectly capable. Like I do enjoy Rick and Morty. I'm not one of those assholes that are all obsessed with it and think it's the greatest thing ever, but I do like a lot of the humor and what they get into outside of the fan base. It's, it's really a series that does not need its fans. <laughs> um, so I don't know. Uh, moving on the expanse, a telltale series coming summer, 2023. This is a sci-fi series. I've been told multiple times I need to watch and I, I have it on my list to watch. Go ahead. So I've watched a little bit of it. It is good. My dad swears by this series and he's really into sci-fi and stuff like that. You might like um, this then. So it's um it's it's good. But my question is, uh-huh. and this is a very important question. Why are they why is Telltale announcing another Telltale series when they haven't finished a Blue Wolf Among Us 2? I don't know. <laughs> because remember, Telltale got bought out. They're I, it's kind of a new company. I know that, but then they said, oh, no, we're still making this. Like, it's still going to come out. And yet you're announcing another game when you should be finishing The Wolf Among Us 2. Which... Rachel, I, I agree. I'm, I, I perfectly I'm agree just, with this I'm point. Just, I'm, but... I'm just so incensed yeah. about it. So I'm hoping we at least hear something about that series soon. Yeah. Um, I need to. I have The Wolf Among Us. And then when I found out they were being closed down, and it wouldn't be finished. I was like, I don't even want to play this. Like, I don't want to play this just to find out I can't get an ending to it. But now that they're coming out with one, as soon as they release it, I think I'm going to play the first one. So the really, own. the really funny thing is uh-huh. that they announced the Wolf Among Us 2. And then like, I want to say like four or five months later, they were like, we're being bought out. And I was just like, <laughs> why, the, why would you announce that then? Like, they may not have known like that's you always have an inkling okay that's this is not a like a no nintendo but... has an inkling that's what splatoon comes from oh boy mm-hmm. dad joke here oh my um, god i'm full of a you are yeah uh, so what else is ridiculously old and kind of funny in a weird way other than me uh killer clowns from outer space coming early 2023 a series I never thought would come back for anything other than the sci-fi channel. Uh, listen, uh, in 2019, <laughs> there was a killer clowns house at horror nights. Seriously. Yep. Oh, I need to find pictures of that. And then there's also a killer clowns house this year at horror nights, but in California. So uh, yeah, no, I, I, I joke about having been able to drive everywhere with an electric car, but I'm not doing a California trip yet. Yeah. I'm not but ready for that. Just so you know. So they, they, uh, they did and are making a comeback uh-huh. and multiplayer horror games are really in right now. Like all of the horror stuff that's been added to dead by daylight and people like play the crap out of that game. Yeah. So I don't get me wrong. I'm not bagging on this. I'm just laughing. I'm like, this is not a series I ever expected to show up at all. Like I remember watching this as a kid when it popped up on the sci-fi channel or mm-hmm. like, or the what was like TBS up all mm-hmm. night or whatever, when they were showing, you know, people showing these old horror movies. Cause yeah. this came out originally in 1988. Yeah. But the trailer was once again, muted for YouTube, but I had seen it separately. So I knew what was going on. Right. Um, but it's such a fun idea. You get the people trying to beat the clowns and then you can use all the weird rules of how the clowns were to play the game. So you can cram a bunch of people into small areas, popping out of like pizza boxes. You wrap people up in cotton candy and then they drink them like a spider would. You can make shadow puppets that will like kill and eat people, you know, all these other weird rules. And I guess I'm curious, like if you get you hit them in the nose, you shoot them in the nose if that still kills them as fast as it did in the movie. So that was the thing from what I, from what I read and what I very briefly saw, it kind of has the Friday, the 13th game vibes, at least in style. Of it's from the what, same people that made that. Yeah. So that's, that's why there you go. Okay. Um, but it's got the like absolutely bonkersness of the ghostbusters games. So 
Oh, that go- I can't wait for that new multi-part Ghostbusters mm-hmm. It's going to be good. It's literally, oh. it's literally dead by daylight with Ghostbusters. That's what that new yeah. Ghostbusters game is. I am and I'm in. I'm such I, a Ghostbusters nut. I told my buddy Tass that if he does not play that, I I I will buy the game for him and make him play it. Like there's Rachel, no I I yeah. need a fellow Ghostbuster. Come on. We I don't I'll buy it on whatever system or whatever we need to get it on. I'm getting it on VR. I'm getting it on whatever we need to get. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. I love me some yeah, Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I just seeing this game, like the detail they put into it, like it's amazing how accurate the models are mm-hmm. to the original ridiculous costumes of these clowns from outer space. Uh, I'm hoping I get to see the top spaceship. Like when that it's a giant fly, you know, flying top when it lands, it's the top of a circus tent. It's just so much stuff of that movie. I remember as a kid. All right, moving on. We have Scars Above, which was just listed as coming soon. Once again, it's muted for YouTube, so who knows what this is about. And it's coming to consoles and PC. Moving on. Uh, Word Song. <laughs> I don't know what I watched. Okay. I don't get what this is supposed to be. <laughs> so so, so I, I looked it up because I read your notes here. <laughs> and it is... It is... There's no such thing as a reliable narrator, which is true. Any yep. any uh, author or writer or any, whatever you do knows this, um, but it's a historical fantasy set against the backdrop of medieval Portugal, which isn't not oh. not really a country that you know. I think any games have explored. Yeah, um, not really too so, much on that one. So the the most interesting thing about Word Song is that the story hasn't been written yet. Hmm. So they okay. debuted this short artistic trailer to attract talent to come and help them create this game. So it was a big marketing ploy. Um, and, but they don't want to define things and make it too rigid. They want to let people give us their ideas as they're building this story. So they're creating a world without a story. Um, so like... There's main I stories. There's, I was like, I don't get what's going on. It's, it's a little, it's a little esoteric, honestly, to be, it's to be out there. entirely honest with you. But it's, um, it's got, who's the name of the guy? Uh, Gard- his name's Gardner. It's, um, ah, it's Jeff Gardner, um, from something wicked. Uh, but it's also got Charles Staples, um, mm-hmm. who was, uh, one of the brains at Obsidian Entertainment before um, Microsoft acquired them, and he's oh, okay. the design cool. director. Uh, so, I mean, there's there's some there's some interesting people attached to it for sure. But I think it's kind of interesting because there there's not really a story yet. Like they have their they have their kind of their core stuff that they want in the game, but they don't have a story yet. It's been unwritten, which is kind of kind of like a a bizarre backwards way to design a game um very much so so i'm i'm kind of <laughs> interested because you know a lot of games start with storyboarding and all of that kind of stuff and it just they're not doing that so i'm like what do you what do you build in combat <laughs> systems environments and what, what are you, you gonna put it? in it i don't know what, what's going on so but yeah there's that and then all of right. course you know, we got Age of Empires 4 coming out, I guess. Um, well, two that's, new- it's out, but we're getting okay. new DLC oh, for we're getting it. getting new DLC. See, I don't play mm-hmm. this game, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it got I used to new- love the old Age of Empires. Two new civilizations added as free anniversary update, which is going to be October 25th that that comes out. Um, you get the, the Ottomans. Ooh, mm-hmm. the Ottoman Empire. Very nice. And, and the, the Malians. The Malians. Yep. Uh, and, then, and then, of course, uh, Gotham Knights. Here we go. October <laughs> 21st uh everyone seems to still be iffy on this one but it does I, I am intriguing. i mean i i i barely looked at it um but well I mean, it's, it's got a Harley non-batman Quinn. batman yeah yeah it's got clayface mr freeze the court of owls and all kinds of different stuff so yeah. this was one of the first showings since they announced they dropped the 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 last generation consoles so PS4 and Xbox One were completely dropped. So it's only yeah. in the newer generation now. Oh, neat. Now this this looks interesting. Yes. Um, Where the Wind Meets. It's an open world RPG with action, adventure, and martial arts. I mean, I, I already like it. I also really like the title. Um, mm-hmm. 
set in a turbulent time in the Northern Song Dynasty, and that it's they have, you have the ability to hop around on water, which is cool. It just looked neat. They were jumping neat. from boat to boat. So yeah, I was like, all right, why not? Now, now, <laughs> now, this next one, I'm just like, I, the moment I saw who it was like in regards to i was like okay here we go well Hideo this is just Ki- another jeff keely thing so yeah hideo kojima brain structure podcast it's going to be on spotify starting on the 8th of september only on Exclusive, spotify right? yep um it's going to feature both english and japanese versions with with simultaneous imp- interpretation what is it going to talk about i don't know it's hideo kojima <laughs> he's just it's gonna be weird no matter he's what. It's gonna it's gonna be weird no matter what, and he's gonna be talking out of his rear end, <laughs> and and sounding very intelligent while he does it. Um, Don't take drugs, kids. Just listen to the Hideo Kojima podcast. Exactly. Uh, Park Beyond. Now this is kind of fascinating <laughs> because I grew up um, playing like Roller Coaster Tycoon, Zoo Tycoon. Mm-hmm. Do you remember the like games that they put out that was by like it was like Sim Safari and Sim. Mm-hmm like nate like state park or natural park or national park or something like that and oh, yeah. i still can see those like those screens and that and hear that music like in my dreams like <laughs> I'll, I'll just be like one day like literally the other day i woke up and i was like oh man sim safari i wonder if i could play that again you can't find even a like uh a version of it gotten from a strange place uh, it is <laughs> completely gone. Like I'll have to see if I still have it. I'll send it to you. Oh, I don't even know if it would play on my, well, I don't have a disc drive, so, uh, that's, it would be, be digital something. anyways at this point. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, but park beyond it's a new amusement park building game. It's coming out mm-hmm. next year, PS five series X and S and PC. So, um, I, I guess that means there's a lot of, a lot of stuff in it. It's beyond the theme park. So, oh, Lord. <laughs> um, but now this is something interesting, Jeremy, that when I saw this, yeah. I was like, man, I bet Jeremy's regretting getting that car now. <laughs> not, not quite. Not uh, quite. I, I mean, I was very tempted, but so this one was the Pokemon concept car that they showed off with it being made with mini uh, Ace Man. It's the mini Ace Man concept. Mm-hmm. So mini Cooper's working on it. It looks like Bulbasaur turned into a car, like the bottom of the car, the main body of it's that bluish teal color of a Bulbasaur while the roof area is the green like on the back of a Bulbasaur it's adorable but it's got projectors built into it to display games or Pokemon movies and TV shows out the front and then all of the animations inside because this is a fully electric vehicle are based on and show Pikachu because it's an electric car Um, which even on my car I had already made the joke I was going to put an electric I wanted to put a uh a Jolteon inside my car just because, you know, my car is an electric EV. Dad joke. Um, yeah, I'm just full of them today. Uh, I was looking at a picture of the car too. It's adorable. It's cute. Like they've, they talked like they were going to sell it, but then they also said this was a concept. So why, I don't understand that. Why people even it's for marketing usually to show too. it off. But even if they sold this, you can imagine how much this thing would cost. I mean, I my car alone, it's not even the highest model. It's an SE, uh, SEL that I got. I think it was 47 grand. Mm-hmm. Like, I can only imagine what this thing's going to be. Mini Coopers are already expensive, let alone be an electric one and Pokemon and rare. It's like the shiny of electric cars. <laughs> so you're, you're right. Yeah. I mean, would you, would this be something you would drive? I mean, I like the look of the car, but. Eh. You're not, not quite sure on that one. You're just I'm, I'm, the constant I'm, I'm, looks. I, I am, I am more partial to Hyundai's myself. So. Cause this I have, an, I have, now. I have an, I have an Elantra GT. So. Nice. Okay. But yeah, it's just, it was very out of left field for a video game show to pop up with a concept car. So. I guess I can't say too much. They did have a year. I guess it was an E3. They brought out an all Lego uh, car for a Forza thing. So whatever. Um, Next up was Warhammer 40K Dark Tide coming November 30th of this year. Steam and Windows. Basically, it's another first person four player co-op game. You play as a what they call a reject, which is a convict that's free to fight until they die. 
uh, with melee and range combat, it's, you know, it's Warhammer. There is going to be so much dying everywhere. Um, next up was Blacktail coming this winter, PS5, Series X, S, and PC. It's a forest place based exploration. Wasn't very clear on exactly what was going on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I don't know. Uh, Phantom Hellcat, PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, S, and Steam. Once again, a game muted for YouTube. Could not figure out what was going on in the trailer without it. Was really funny. Right afterwards, they brought a lady out about the game. She's like, do you guys love what you heard? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I didn't hear anything. That really annoyed me. Uh, Crossfire X content update. They're doing Babylon on August 23rd, which is already out by this point. Dwarf Romantic coming from for Switch. It's a hex tile based game where you build up the world and find pieces. It looked peaceful, but I couldn't figure out the gameplay. Uh, Rachel, this one is all for you. The Outlast Trials. Getting a closed beta October 28th to November 1st. This is another in the Outlast Survival Horror series. <laughs> no. No, thank you. <laughs> Just, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't like that game. Yeah, it looked pretty freaky. The other ones are pretty bad. This one I just think, mm. I think part of it is you were in like night vision the entire time and that really oh, just yeah. like, weirded me out. Um we get that creature design where you see them all messed up face, but it's the glowing eyes because of the night vision that just mm-hmm, makes it look mm-hmm. even more inhuman. But all right, and I can't make any jokes. I've gone more than you this show. Yeah, you have. <laughs> I'm tired. Uh, and the last one I was kind of this popped up recently as a joke when they first showed off the trailer for Goat Simulator three months ago, where they made it look like the Dead uh, Dead Island two trailer that was shown off years ago. I remember but that. Dead Island two has been finally shown with a release date of February third, twenty twenty three. Well, we can all buy lotto tickets now because I thought I was going to die before they released this game. Yep, uh, this one. I don't get what this means. All right. PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, Stadia, Epic Games. I get that. But it's also coming to Alexa Game Control. Like, what the hell is that? Also, I really apologize if I just turned on your Alexa. Shut off the lights. Um, <laughs> someone is going to be very mad at me. So they had a short gameplay trailer. You know, lots of zombie killing looked a lot of fun. Brutal dismemberments. It's, I don't know. It looked like it'd be fun. There's six playable characters. This also takes place in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and an unannounced third California location. Ooh. The crafting system returns from the first game. But the history on this thing, it was originally announced in 2014. That's 18 years ago. Uh, with Jaeger Development originally making it until they were replaced in 2015 with Sumo Digital who were then replaced with Dan Buster, which is an internal studio of Deep Silver in 2019. What, was that the trailer with the guy running that put yep. in the headphone? Yeah. Yeah, I think that was the 2015 trailer. Um, and I remember everyone in the audience lost their dang minds. Oh, I was and excited. Here, here we are, all these years <laughs> later. I'd given up on it. I, mm, yeah. So Jaeger Development, I think, was the one that went off, or maybe it was Sumo Digital, that went off and made Dying Light. So they kind of went off and did their own thing, and I think they succeeded pretty well. But yeah, that's how they capped off that show. We just we happened to get the return of what we thought was a dead franchise, ironically being one of zombies. Mm-hmm. So why not? All right. So now that that is finally done, we can move on to other things. And I just wanted to touch on this next piece. Like, it's kind of a weird announcement the whole legal side of it hasn't come out yet but just the fact that sony is facing a 5.9 billion dollar lawsuit for quote ripping people off in regards to digital games in the uk apparently if you bought if like if you think you might be affected by this uh loss if you literally bought anything having to do with like ps5 games ps4 games whatever in the last Mm -hmm. however long that they said you can put your name in essentially and you can get up to 560 euro euro. Mm, yeah. I want a euro now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
and like 560 <laughs> euro. Um, and, but only if you were in the UK and you, you know, bought PlayStation digital games, if you were in the US. Well, this, this went to court in the US and they got thrown out. Like yeah. they tried to run this here as well. Yeah, so it's, they're um, they're going to the UK to see if it it'll it'll stick, and then well, if it have, does yeah. stick, they'll take it back to the US. <laughs> We've seen that it, happen recently in media. Yeah, so. it's it's kind of a weird scenario. I just wanted to at least bring it up to be like, yeah, we're aware of this, but we don't. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the details of all this stuff, but I'm going to see what I can find out. All right, this next one I'm going to run through real quick, but it'll just be me because for interest of not causing any issues. It's going to be quiet on the other end, but hey, we will just ignore that. So Time Warner Discovery Plus merger is leading to many shows being basically wiped from existence and movies as well. Batgirl, we already knew, was previously canceled, which the studio is letting the crew have a one time showing for themselves. So let's hope somebody finds a way to record it or something. Uh, other items that got canceled, Wonder Twins on HBO Max, Gordita Chronicles on HBO Max, which was canceled after one season as they are moving away from live action family programming. Strange Adventures on HBO Max, which was Greg uh, Berlanti's DC anthology series, which looked kind of cool, but it was very obscure. This one did not make sense to me why they would cancel this. Batman Cape Crusader, which was HBO Max and other services. It's an animated retelling of the Batman mythology by Bruce Timm, who helped create Batman the Animated Series, one of the most successful DC animated series that led to Justice League and all this whole my just reigning champions of animated superhero stuff. Uh, JJ Abrams. I'm pretty sure we know who that guy is. Matt Reeves, you know, the director of the Batman, one of the more successful recent Batman films and Ed Brubaker. So they're trying to get this show onto another channel if they can at least get it worked out. But HBO has decided to pass on it. Other animations that are passed on include Merry Little Batman, The Day the Earth Blew Up, a Looney Tunes movie, Bye Bye Bunny, a Looney Tunes musical. Did I do that to the holidays? A Steve Urkel story. I don't know if that one's more obscure to show up or the killer clowns. I really don't know which one's weirder. That was definitely not on my bingo card. (laughs) Nobody's. If it was, you have a problem or you're a psychic. Uh, And then this one kind of hurt me personally. The Amazing World of Gumball, the movie. Like that show, watch it. It is so funny and better than it ever has a right to look at, like to look and be. So uh, Demi Monday from HBO. Uh, I don't know what that's about. We guess we won't know what that's about, but it was a $200 million sci-fi drama written and created by J.J. Abrams. The Green Lantern series has been canceled and they're talking about canceling some of their other more popular series like Doom Patrol, Harley Quinn, Titans. Uh, We already know the Flash series is being canceled on CW, which is getting a short and final season to wrap it up. Batwoman is being canceled. Legends of Tomorrow, which they don't even get into to close it. They just ended on a cliffhanger, which I absolutely hate when shows do that. Let them at least do something to finish it out. I don't care. Just something. At least comic book. Let them make a comic book about it. Um The Flashpoint movie and Peacemaker are still up in the air, whether or not they're going to cancel those or let them continue. But to wrap all this up, Warner Brothers Discovery somehow uh, somehow surprised to have lost two point three nine billion in market capital since Friday. Who could have seen this coming? And we're going to move on. Rachel, what's next? I'm vaguely (laughs) reminded of the Netflix situation. Um, Yep. 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 Uh, well, Wa- Wave Race 64 has been added to the Nintendo Switch Online expansion pack for N64 titles. I might have to go check that out because uh, I love me some some Wave Race. It's a oh, good the time. music is still like as soon as it starts, it's just like, all right, I'm here. I'm home. It, this game it, is so much fun. Is a bop. <laughs> the, uh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> the Knights of the Old Republic remake has now moved from uh, I will butcher that name. Aspire. Uh, Aspire Media to Saber Interactive Studio in Eastern Europe. Um, Both companies are owned by Embracer as a parent company, um, which is like, we're going to take this game and we're going to shove it over there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, People still thinking this is going to be out this year or early next year. Um, You're lying to yourselves. 
uh, it's you not know, gonna happen let them keep their hope it'll be squashed but let them keep it yeah uh, if they want a new hope they can go watch episode four that's true that's true <laughs> but um oh resident evil on netflix canceled after one season am i surprised I was, no i'm not i was i'm still watching it i have been surprised surprisingly entertained like it's yeah it's weird well it is here, here, barely connected to resident evil here's here's the thing about netflix they can't i i, I love netflix i love them to <laughs> they death but they, they cancel everything early. they cancel everything uh when it doesn't go the way that they want it to um even when it does they even still when cancel it, it. yeah even when it is successful if something does not go the way that they want it to and something isn't received or perceived the way that they want it to it does not go forward the fact that the witcher um thing is still going on uh it's all henry cavill man that's that's <laughs> why that is why the witcher is it's still a, going uh, it's netflix, the nerd god you just can't yeah netflix can't cannot them. make i love them but they cannot make video game to, to tv series they cannot make them they cannot make anime except witcher <laughs> Except Witcher, but that that was a book also. It was a book first, yeah. so kind of different. They have two sources to pull from. It's cheating, uh, which, <laughs> yeah, it's it's not, but um, and it's more based on the books than it is the games. So yeah. there's that. Um, but also yeah, they um, can't do anime to live action adaptations. They really can't. Well, there is one coming out relatively soon that looks like okay, it's going to be okay. But I. I actually, and I will argue this, and I don't care who hates me for it. I liked Cowboy Bebop. Oh no, I, think I did. It too. should have gotten I a second too. season. I my I, I, so oh, when I got so good. when I had my appendix removed in December of last <laughs> year, and my dad came down to take care of me. Bless him, Aww. love him to death. Uh, he it's and I watched. Do. He and I watched Cowboy Bebop on Netflix, and he and I were like, "Oh, this is." this is good oh my wow like yeah like it was it was campy but it was supposed to be like that's the whole point yeah it was perfectly and, as it should be yeah it was like it, just it was good like there was a mm -hmm. little bit of oddness um you're gonna get that there was some oddness but overall it captured cowboy bebop's heart and that's mm -hmm. what was important and then they just go Nah. And I'm like, Netflix. What the hell? Hey. <laughs> like, I don't know if they have like and this did not this this did not used to happen at Netflix. I mean, Stranger Things is still going. Yeah. Still going. I think they have like what, one season left? Like they yeah. announced that the this next, next season is the last is one. The last one. Yep. Uh, they did announce recently, let's bring this up. Umbrella Chronicles is also at the last one. Not yep. Umbrella Chronicles. Uh, um, I'm thinking Resident Evil. No, what's it? Um, yeah, Umbrella, no, Academy. Umbrella Academy. Umbrella Academy. Yep, this is going to be its last one. Yep. Yep. But at least they get to finish it. Like they mm -hmm. should have given. Mm -hmm. If they gave Cowboy Bebop a second season, I think it could have wrapped up the story they wanted to do and be good. Yep. Like yep. at least give them two seasons. But also, uh, like the original Cowboy Bebop was only one season, but it was told in yeah. a different way. So, like, oftentimes anime series can be shorter than like uh an actual like live action tv series because stories are told in different ways yeah i mean we would have we would have finally gotten ed in the second yeah. season because they <sighs> hinted it and they showed her a little bit we would have gotten more of ein which i thought that dog was adorable yep you know we would have gotten more of you find out what happened with spike in them with his mm -hmm. past and mm -hmm. I liked how they were extending parts of the story and extending it out from there. And I thought they were doing a good job adapting that. Yeah. Because that's, that's what it is. It's an adaptation. You know, there's going to be some changes when you change formats from anime to live action. I think the thing action, I like but... most about it is it felt like one of those old Japanese movies that they overdubbed. <laughs> I like can, that's, okay. Yeah, that's I what see it that. felt like. And I think that's what one of the things that they were trying to do is they wanted it to feel like that because that's kind of, the same way that you know cowboy bebop did have some major silliness in it and it had I, some very serious bits in yeah. it as well but it still had that silliness and i think that was their answer for um not still having the silliness but they wanted to do something a little like a little more 
and that was their way of doing it. So I, I think for the three main characters, the casting was perfectly. It was done. great. Oh, they did. They were just job. every one of them for Spike Spiegel for Valentine for. I remember um, when they announced name. Spike's casting, I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, that is perfect. I would not have cast a different person. Like, this is amazing. And then he doesn't even get to play the guy again. And he was even upset. The actor yeah, was upset. He was like, what the hell? He was like beside himself. I felt <laughs> sorry for him because he did I, such a good job. I felt, I think the worst for the lady that played uh, Valentine. Mm-hmm. Faye. Because, yep. well, yeah, we're playing Faye Valentine. Because people were giving her crap and like, I loved how she played that role. She had the mannerisms, the voice, everything that she did fit that character perfectly. But people were attacking her because, oh, she didn't look a certain way or she didn't dress a certain way. And I'm like, I kind of prefer like that was that's supposed to be animated. It's over the top for a lot of that. She pulled off a realistic version of that character that I really liked seeing. Yeah, I, I wanted to see more of her for how she would just kind of weasel her way through things or just start stealing things, you know. Ah, such a lost opportunity. All right. Our final story for tonight. This is one I thought you might just talking about because we talk on Twitter a lot. We, we do. We do a lot of stuff on Twitter. Twitter has uh, done some stupid stuff here. So Twitter is facing allegations of major security issues as a previous security head has turned whistleblower about them. Just a reminder, we don't just talk about video games. We also talk about technology sometimes, too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. Yep, yep, yep. So Peter Mudge Zat, uh, Zatko, excuse the pronunciation there. He was a previous head of security for Twitter and reported directly to the CEO, uh, which I believe at the time was Jack Dorsey states that Twitter leadership misled their own board and government regulators about the security vulnerabilities that they were facing. He also allegedly opened the door to they uh, Twitter allegedly opened the door to foreign spying manipulation and hacking as well as disinformation campaigns, which we're still feeling the brunt of for a lot of stuff uh, with the way modern politics have been going with people trying to just believe any stupid thing. Uh, user data is not properly being deleted when a user quits the service, sometimes because they had simply lost track of it. So they, if you quit Twitter, they just may have lost where your data was and it's just floating there somewhere in their databases, even though they're supposed to have deleted it. Once you leave, they're supposed to get rid of all of your stuff. Um, and they misled regulators about this deleted data that they were supposed to remove. And then lastly, it's kind of a big one, Zatko, as an example believe the Indian government had forced Twitter to install one of their agents on the payroll with access to user data during a time of intense protesting over in India at that time. So they could try and find out where these people were, where they were trying to coordinate with each other. And it's a pretty big claim against Twitter on this. Oh yeah, for sure. So you have any thoughts on this one? You know, I'm going to, this is going to sound terrible. But okay. I'm going to I'm going to say something that um, was said to me by a friend of mine that was involved in cybersecurity um, okay. on black hat and white hat sides. He's done a lot. And he has said to me and many people he knows, both students and peers alike, the people who want your information already have it. Mm-hmm. So. You can protect yourself as much as you possibly can um, from, you know, other stupid like people that want your information. But the people who really want your information, the talented ones, mm-hmm. the, the ones that, uh, you know, governments hire. The ones with the resources. Stuff, the ones with the resources. Mm-hmm. They already have it. So exposing these kind of like things is great. Like it, you know, it keeps people aware and on their toes and that kind of stuff. But the 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 dark reality of this is is that y- your information's already in somebody's hands. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I just I read about this and thought it was kind of interesting because part of this also people are wondering because the whole Elon Musk trying to purchase Twitter and they're going over the whole stuff with the bots and everything. If this is somehow tied to that, like, oh, he's trying to defame Twitter or to lower their value so he can come in and try and renegotiate. And I, 
I, I think the argument is was done in good faith. This guy has a really good history and capability of his job, his position and what he's done. I don't think at all that this is just like a, you know, a ploy on the side to do that. Is it badly time for Twitter? Yes. But if this is of their own doing and they're being called out for it, there's not really a set timetable for that. You, mm -hmm. you get your comeuppance when you get your comeuppance. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard too much about this since this originally was written down. I actually wrote this story. I think it was almost two weeks ago, uh, shortly after we did the last show. And not much has really changed on it. So I don't know if this is one of those that was like it kind of flared up. We saw a bit about it and it went quiet at that point And we're just mm -hmm. not going to hear whispers of it anymore. Or if this is going to eventually come to any further repercussions, we just kind of have to wait and see. But I wanted to talk about it and let people know, you know, so they can investigate and look into it themselves about their own data and information on Twitter. I think it's important. I still use Twitter, but it's nice knowing this stuff. So. Gotta All right. Always, well, always hmm? keep, keep aware. Always be yeah. aware. Never put anything on the internet that you have no intention of others to see, because guess what? Once it's on there, it's there. Mm hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> if you want it that private, don't put it online. Simple as that. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and close out this show. I know it's a little bit of a quicker one. Next week's show episodes or next week, next episode, episode 75 might be a little delayed. I'm going to be out of town for Dragon Con uh, later this week. So if you happen to hear this, uh, come find me. I'll be wandering around there. You can message me on Twitter uh, over at Zenspath, Z-N-S-P-A-T-H, or the official podcast Twitter at Zenspath, P-O-D, to maybe meet up. We can chat and see people. I'll be handing out cards, doing a lot of photography. Um, and then the day I come back, I'm being sent for work for the rest of the week. So we'll see what time we actually get to record this. I know I'm going kind of out of order of our normal closing, but I wanted to at least get that mentioned in beforehand. But Rachel, where can everybody find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on my uh, Twitter, my Instagram, which is uh, outrageous. That's O U T underscore R A C H E O U S. Um, I usually Great cosplay there. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I usually post cosplay stuff on uh, Instagram. Sometimes I post the things that I'm crafting or sometimes I post when I'm going live um, on Twitch. Um, mostly I'm going to post on Twitter when I'm going live on Twitch. Sometimes I provide colorful commentary uh, on uh, certain like tweets uh, in regards to things I like. Um, but you can also, of course, find me on Twitch, uh, which is twitch.tv slash slash uh, outrageous, uh, which is O-U-T-R-A-C-H-E-O-U-S. No underscore this time. Uh, and I'll probably be streaming several times this week, uh, probably playing Black Mirror or uh, Shadow Hearts or something else. Really, whatever um, uh, just like jumps out to me. Maybe tomorrow, depending on how I feel after I get home from work. Uh, definitely, probably on Thursday. Uh, not Wednesday. I'm busy that night. Uh, but maybe Friday too. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, trying to, trying to, to trying to get, get into streaming just a little bit more. I had like worked myself onto his like a good schedule for a little while. And then I just fell off the planet because you know, things happen life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely. I still need to get on there for, uh, some of the pirate games with you. I need to, I need to just break down and do it. It's is is a good game. is a is a fun time for sure. It's <laughs> is nonsense, but it's fun. Yep. Um, as I said before, I've been your host Jeremy Powers. I already mentioned where you can find me over on Twitter. Um, you can also talk to us over at bitly slash Discord over on the official Discord for us, where you can chat with all of us. We're usually on there goofing off, sending memes and stuff back and forth talking about tech news, what games we're playing, movies, food, 3D printing, all that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. You can also find, if you're listening to this, the video version over at youtube.com slash zenspathcom. And if you are watching this and you want to get an audio version to listen to while you drive or do whatever, you can find that at zenspath.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com, where you can find the show. And, uh, yeah, I think that'll be it. And I'll have to 
send you whatever cosplay stuff that I come across while I'm over at Dragon Con this week, Rachel, so you can chat about it or give your opinions on it, maybe. Yeah, please, please do. And um, yes. also, if you see anything cool in the vendor hall, you know, shoot me a picture of it because I like seeing things in vendor yeah, halls. Cost you more money, you know, Beetlejuice related. Yeah. Let's uh, let's wonder, do you think, how long do you think it'll be before I find somebody cosplaying as Beetlejuice or Lydia? I'm going to be there all five days. How long do you think it'll take me? If you're wandering around at night, you'll have more likelihood of seeing it. Um, yes. But if we're going to see a Beetlejuice cosplay, more likely it's going to be a musical Beetlejuice cosplay. So musical juice. So it's not okay. going to look exactly like, you know, Keaton's Beetlejuice. It's going right. to look like Alex Brightman Beetlejuice. It'll be in the so, Beetlejuice family. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I'd say within the first couple of days i don't know what theme nights are on what nights this year because i haven't been following it at all keep, because i'm not keep in going. mind i'm gonna so. be with remy oh <laughs> remy and i are gonna be wandering around oh you're gonna have a fun time i can't wait remy's a party animal yeah so. this should be interesting yeah don't get into too all much right. trouble jeremy so oh yeah well my my boys are old enough that they can wander off on their own so we'll see what trouble they get into oh boy oh boy all right and that's been it. We're out. Peace. Hope you enjoyed your pasta, Joey. Let's go Dragon Con! Also, yeah, seriously, hope you enjoyed that pasta.